with Mai, who is catching up with Dion and Scotty, talking about the Dube. Um, can you give me a little bit of history about the company, how long you've been established and why you established? Okay, the company's been up and running for four years now, four years. Uh, the musical instrument was invented nine years ago by myself, uh, but we've only been training for the last four years. So uh, it's been in the public eye for four years, we've been in the making for nine years. Okay, so what was the uh, involvement with, with Scotty into the partnership? Scotty's got a very long story, but we're not going to do that. Uh, I met Scotty through the footballing world and uh, I'd already invented the Jew. It was acoustic then. I met Scotty. Scotty is an electrician working for an electrician company and he suggested, why don't you put a mic inside? Okay, so you're, you're more involved in the designing of, of the product and the yeah, electronic right. side? When, when we met, we found out, Dion told me about the product um, and I was working for a shot fitting firm at the time. So we then got that produced in the workshop, we've done some prototypes and developed how to get the mic in there. We tested the mic just very basically at Dion's, uh, the, first, the first time we'd ever seen the Jew. Um, we tested this mic inside it just to see if it picked up the sound right and it went on from there really. So we started producing it in Chesterfield to start with, all the prototypes, got all the drawings and the designs firmed up from a prototype that Dion had made himself actually, up to what we've got now. We feel like we're in a position now you know, four years on, in a position of strength. We're happy with the mic, we're happy with the build, we're happy with what we have on show. And it's taken us a long time to get where we need to be, but we feel incredibly comfortable with what we've got, proud of what we've got, and we think it sounds and looks. One of our rules, one of our, um, how can I say, one of our rules within the Jew Percussion Company is, has to look good, sound good, and be easily transportable. And we think we've achieved that. Professionally. I've got Carl Brazil with me now. Carl, what is it that you like about the gym and why do you enjoy playing it? Well, firstly, let me tell you a bit about it. I'm not sure if you know about it. This is the nine inch tube, and inside it's got a tiny little dynamic mic. It's a kick drum mic, basically. So it picks up all the low frequencies. So the thing about the tube, I'm obviously sat on a tube. I'll get to that in a minute. This is the smallest tube. It's got four different plating sides. So it's a very percussive instrument. Um, if you're a percussion player, this can be mounted on a rig. It's got, it's got an XLR input, which I'll show you on this one. Can you see that? It's a little XLR input, so you straight in with the cable. This can be part of your percussion rig if you're a percussion player. You can play lots of nice little rhythms and patterns. I won't do it now because I'm on it. And it's also um, it's great for in the gym if you want to do some exercises. Uh, that's the 9 inch. They come in all, all sorts of different sizes. This is the 18 inch, as you can hear straight away. You can, you can nod your head if you want. So this is the 18. Um, this is in white, but it's got a lot of bottom end. So if I'm doing a drum gig or, uh, and I have to play some percussion and get off the kit for a bit, play some shakers and tambourines and have a bit of a, a beatbox machine, which I can play with my hands, I can sit there. And if I've got another one of these rigged up next to me, I could also play it. See what I mean? So they've got all sorts of great tones to them. So as like other instruments, so, so it's like when you play the back of an acoustic guitar, you get one tone. But this has got so many different things, different sides and shape. The other thing I want to tell you about is this. It's not a mini tube. It's a shaker. And I don't know what he's, I don't know what's inside them. It's a secret apparently. There's four of them, aren't there? Yeah. So they're all different pitches, but they're really nice. Sorry, I should do it there. But these are great, so again, if I'm on stage doing a gig, I could have a tambourine on, on, on the left foot, and then I could have the, the shaker, the tube shaker. Shall I keep going? Awkward. <laughs> so there you go. So you've got the mini, the mini tube shakers, which are really cool. Really, really nice, nice tone. You've got the 18 inch tube. That's actually a new one. This is the soju, well done, so yes. Cute. This is because, let me show you, it's got a little, it's not a record, it's a little seat and it's really clever. So I don't know how it sticks on there, but look, that ain't budging, even with my bomb. So, <laughs> so this is uh, this is really good, it's soju, comfy to sit on. I'm even thinking of getting one of these to put on a drum store. So, uh, and they, again, they come in all sorts of different colors. So. I fully endorse the tube and uh, everyone should give it a go. 
here with me now is Josh Devine. Josh, what do you like so much about the gym and playing them? I think it's just very original. Um, I've had to use a cajon before and other percussive instruments, and uh, yeah, it just it was something new, something really fresh, and uh, yeah, it, it definitely brings a lot of people in to look and go, the hell is this, you know? But sounds incredible, you know. It's it's great. It's easily 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 mic. The ones that are mic'd up, you just plug in and play. It's uh, there's no messing around with the different mic configurations. It's just you plug in, sounds great. Yeah, I love it. It's just good fun. What do you think of the the new shakers that have come out this time? These are actually my favourite shakers. I've used others, but they are literally. I've used these on like to record on different records. We recorded some of these live. Uh, for some of the 1D, all the live stuff, and uh, yeah, they sound great. I love them, especially when you pair them up or put them in a four. It sounds great. Uh, and also, this uh, this is the Soju, which is also new. What do you like about, you know, they've even got a seat with it now that you can spin around on. What do you think about that? It's great. You don't have to put a stand up, you don't have to find anywhere. It's just you sit on it and, and you play. It's more simple and Well, you feel like a child again. It's great. <laughs> I love it. I want to talk to you about it. So when you first developed it, it was just the tube. There was no stands. There was no. So why? What? How long's the stand been out? And why did the stand become part of the? Uh, okay, it's. You get a drum stool. It's at the right height. Um, it's easier to play. Um, the stand was quite hard to come about because we tried snare stands, but because the tube. You can play left, right, on the top and on the front, it would rock. So a friend of ours, um, Akbar, he built a stand for us to fit the Jew. Because um, he's that way, he's, he's a genius when it comes to those kind of things. So the stand works perfectly for the Jew, makes it easier to play. You can play sitting down or you can play standing up. We've got two stands. Okay, how do you find, where does the Jew fit into the, the percussion world, if you like? Where do you find its marketplaces? The, the biggest thing that we come up against with it is everybody compares it to the Cajon. Um, we don't, we're probably biased. Um, <laughs> we are biased. But, but we, don't, we don't compare it to the Cajon other than the fact that it's, it's played by it with hand. Um, a lot of people tell us it's a mixture between what other instruments are out there at the minute. Um, but for us it's not a Cajon and it, 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 it riles Dion. Yeah it does, it does. <laughs> it, when people compare it to the Cajon. Yeah, they, they, they... Because there's lots of cajons, people can play the cajon in their own way, and it's basically played in the same way. The jube has four playable faces. It's completely separate. There's only one jube. It's ours. We own it. And there's no other jube. So there's a niche market for the jube. It can be played with rock, can be played with Latin, can be played with pop, funk, anything at all. So if you have the jube, you've got a lot more, in my opinion, you've got a lot more than what you would have with a cajon. It's internally mic's great. Stands are great. I am biased. Okay, so because I've seen um, Stanton Moore use it with brushes. Yeah. He'll put yeah. a Remo brush pad on the top. That's right. And he uses it as, as, as with brushes. So it can be used. You don't have to use your hands. No, not at all. Not at all. When I first invented it nine years ago, it was all about my hand, hands and the speed of the hand and where you hit it. But yes, as you said, I've interviewed Stanton myself and he used brushes on it. And you can actually use a, a bigger sort of a chunky mallet, should I say, a nice soft hitting mallet. You'd get away with using that on maybe the 18 and the 15 to get a different resonance and it has been used on on films as well so you can use brushes and mallets as well so let's move forward then this year 2016 at the nam show you've launched um, two new products into the jube family where before you just had the jube, the jube yeah okay um what's your thought process behind that why did you do that well this is the uh the shakers the little baby shakers uh we have four of these all in the jube colours, uh, and they all have their own separate tones. Um, they don't roll off the table when you put them down, as most uh, shakers do. And they're nice and weighty as well, so that's quite a unique thing to the market. And it's new to us as well, launching the jube shaker as well. And we also, what we're calling the so jube as well, which is the sit on jube, S-O jube. And it's basically a jube that you sit on, but we've designed it with uh, small um, feet, so it's slightly raised off the floor. The playable faces are all around the four sides. You actually sit on it with a nice revolving seat. Therefore, you're not losing any resonance when you sit on it at all. All four sides have got a different tone. 
in the centre it's nice and bassy and on the edges you're getting a bit of a rim shot. So we decided to do it because it works for the cajon. It's a very simple design, the cajon, and it's a great instrument. We feel that ours is the same thought, thought process, but with it being internally mic'd and having four playable sides, you know, we think we may have, you know, hit onto something, fingers crossed. We're back here on the Jube stand. I've got Thomas Lang with me now. Thomas, what is it that you like so much about the Jube and playing them? Well, I like that it's a cube-shaped drum. See, most drums are somehow is circular heads. This is literally outside of the box, yet it's a box. No, seriously, I like it. It's so different. It's so unique. Um, I like the fact that it has different pitches. You know, it could play very melodic patterns on it. Um, it looks really interesting and, and sort of intriguing because it's you know such a different shape. Um, I like the fact that it is internally mic'd, which is huge for me. I, do, I use it a lot in the studio, and it's really easy to use. It's very clean, live, because of the internal mic, you don't get any ambient sound or bleed or anything like that. It always sounds fantastic with just a tiny little bit of reverb. It sounds huge, and, um, and I like the variety, the different sizes. Um, has a lot of different tonal qualities and of course uh, the variety in terms of you know the acoustic one like this here the mic pro version and the soju which is incredible which is like a cajon meets a bunch of different congas or something you know so um, it, it covers so many different sounds and, and a whole huge range of, of, of timbre it's beautiful what do you think of the, the new one of their new products which is these these shakers, shakers? now who doesn't love a good shaker? You know why I love these? The fact that they're cubes allows you to put them down really fast somewhere. You know, when you're playing set and you're switching between sticks and shakers and just pick them up and put them down. Any other shaker is rolls. It's either cylindrical shape or they're eggs or something like that. They roll around. They never keep, they stay in the same place. And these are great because you put them down anywhere and they stay where you put them down. They're really easy to grab and they sound great. Shaker solo. Hang on. I'm feeling it. Okay. Sorry. So what do you think of the soju, which is also with, the, and it's got its seat as well. It feels great. You hear that? You feel that? Yeah. I love the sound. The low end on this thing is, is, is impressive. It's really beautiful. And... You know, all the different... It's just a great sounding kind of hybrid of a cajon, congas, bass drum. You know, it's, every, it's, it's all in there. I love it. And of course, it's also internally mic'd, so you get that really nice, clean, easy, uh, uh, you know, uh, sound without much engineering and twiddling of knobs, so it's great. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Thomas. My pleasure, Jill. <laughs> okay, so it's a unique percussion brand, all, all the um, products that you've got as well. Um, and as you say, you're competing against people that look at it and think it's a cajon. What would, your, what, would you, what would you say as a new company in the percussion or in the musical world, what would you say your obstacles have been to overcome? The, the comparison to the con without, without a doubt, yeah. um, because everybody that we come across mm. tends to do that compared to the con. The other thing was the pricing point, it's a little more expensive than a cajon. Um, and because of the comparison to that cajon, it, that's the problem. But you've got a mic, you've got a very expensive uh, mic. Exactly, um, which is what we try to not justify the price, but when people ask, that's the explanation. There's a mic in there, it's not just three, de three dead sides with the, the front face available, it's, it's more than that. The, the four sides and how the microphone's in there, mm. the positioning of it, the framework that's in there to do that, it is a little more involved. Along the way, we spoke earlier about producing it. People have said to us, oh, we can make it, we can do you that, we can do you that, we can do you that for half the cost of what you're paying, until they come to look at it, and, and it's not just a box. So the, the obstacle has been the cajon side of things, definitely. Um, we think 
there's justification in the difference in costs due to the fact of you're getting the four sides, the four different tones, and it's a little more to a percussionist than, than a cajon. Ironically, when we have percussionists, we had some, some very good percussionists over today actually. When they come over, it's very surprising that they look at it and then you can see they're quite studious looking at it. And then when yeah. they play it, they just stand up and it's wow. So hopefully we, we, we're getting the right sort of feedback with regards to the instrument. Um, and, it's, and it's very satisfying. It's very sat I'm not from a musical background, um, but it's very satisfying to see and hear people play it and the, the comments that we get are very, very positive. Okay, um, final question. Um, where do you see the company in the next few years? Are you going to be adding more percussion to, to the brand? Um, where, do you see, where do you see yourself going? I, I, mean, I wish I could answer that because I'm always thinking about new things. I might mean Scotty in the middle of the night and say, I, I, I want to try this, I want to try that. Um, I think we have to walk first. I think we have to get uh, the soju out there, get the shakers out there, get it into the shops get it distributed, let the world know how good the Jube is, because we're incredibly proud of it. Once it's out there, we're both quietly confident that the drummers, the percussionists, the universities, the schools, the children will love the Jube. We really believe that. And this show, 2016 at NAM, has been the best we've ever done. This is the fourth one we've done, and it's been the best by far. Lots of interest, lots of uh, distribution interest as well. And, you know, we're getting drummers coming over, you know, big name drummers and they love it and percussionists as well. So, like I say, fingers crossed, we'll just keep working hard, do our best to get it out there. And we feel once it's out there, we'll be okay. Well, that's all we've got time for here on the Jube booth. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you at the next show.